How you doing, family? We're also what's going over is the deceitfulness of this image. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 14. Uh, do y'all know what comes with this image? Because they didn't just like just put an image up and then it said that was it. What all comes with this image right here? Do y'all know? Right, right, but Okay, you're saying what this image does has nothing to do with you. Out of the Bible, I'm gonna show you what this image comes, I mean comes with, and I'm gonna show you how it influenced us as a people, alright? Let's see what the Bible says. Uh -huh. We're gonna let stuff influence them at their own will. Okay. For instance, if you have a child, right, or a newborn baby, mm -hmm. can you just leave it on its own and it, it'll learn to do? No. And what happens? You have to teach it things. Yeah. Right. So who are the original teachers of us? Our parents. Yeah. Who taught our parents? But when we first got here, right, what happened to us? They, they and then they the about the Actually, sis, they didn't allow us to read or write for hundreds of years. And I'm going to prove that to you out the Bible. Oh, I know that. Uh, give me a read that. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 4. For if he that cometh. Read this, Lord. For if he. This is talking about another man. Read. That cometh preaches another Jesus. So we already know another man came and preached another Jesus, right? All right, let's see what this image comes with. Whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit. Another what? Another spirit. So what spirit does this image come with? And bring it up. I can show you some. Uh, give me uh, the, uh, Deuteronomy 20 to yeah. Because in today's world, what does, does this world demand a dress code for the people of America? Or y'all can kind of wear what you want as long as it's not too revealing. People can wear what they want, they can kind of do what they want as long as it's within the constraints of the law, right? So that's what this image comes from. But God, he actually has a dress code for his chosen race of people. And before I get that, do y'all know who God's chosen race of people is? You say who? You say us? Okay. Do you know if God has a chosen race of people? You know, I'm, I'm listening. I'm okay, listening. before we read that, let's get the chosen race of people. Uh, let's get Deuteronomy 7 and 6. No. We gotta understand, before we can start diving deep about the facts of the Bible, let's get a foundation real quick. So we're about to read about who is God speaking to. Alright? Let's see who God is reading about. That's the joy of people. That's the joy of people. So I'm going to get to who God is, who is talking to, who all his laws, who his commandments are for. Because this image says God loves everybody and God deals with everybody, right? Because if you just be good, this man says you can make it to the kingdom of heaven. But who does God really talk to in the words of God? Let's see. Read that. Joel, chapter 2 and verse 27. Come on. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. So God says, I am in the midst of Israel. Read. And that I am the Lord your God and none else. So who is the God? Who's God is the, I mean, of this Bible? Who's he the God of? Is he the God of everybody or? He said he's the God of Israel, right? You agree with that, sister? I'm gonna call you. Yeah, I agree with that. You agree with that? But what about when he said, for God so loved the world? All right, let's get what that. So that who world? is that world, all right? Go to John 3.16. The world is the world. The all world right. is everybody. So what about that part? First, we're going to read that. <laughs> okay. Because the thing is, you know, I've been to the Christian church. I'm, I'm pretty sure you've been to the Christian church. You've been to the Christian church. They read that scripture, right? So let's read it and see what it's actually saying. All right, read that. The book of John, chapter 3 and verse 16. Come on, help. For God so loved the world. So, all right, so you hear God so loved the world, and then he'll preach about God loving everybody, right? Yeah. All right, read. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Right, so you will hear that. No, no, stay right there. We're saying in John. So you would hear that and you believe that God's talking about everybody. All right, but what does John 3 and 14 say? Because in the same chapter, they're make, Christ is making a comparison. So he's saying, just like how God so loved the world, also verse 14, two verses above it is telling you what exactly what the world is, who the whosoever is. What? Read verse 14. John chapter 3 and verse 14. Come on, no. And as Moses. It says, and as Moses. So it's saying the same way Moses, read. Lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So it says, just the same exact way Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, same must be the Son of Man be lifted up to who? Who was in the wilderness? Was everybody there? Amen. 
who was in the wilderness. All right, give me that number 11, I believe. Is that number 11? Six and 21. Get that, get that number six and 21. So we're about to read to you who Moses lifted up that serpent to in the wilderness. All right? We we'll read that. Is that it? Well, 21 is. It's 21. Yeah, it's 21. Get number 21. So, so two verses up, it says, just like how Moses lifted up a serpent in the wilderness, the same as the Son of Man be lifted up. Two verses later, God loves the world. Who is this world and who is this whosoever? It's those who are in the wilderness, but Moses rescued them from Egypt. Read that. Numbers chapter 21 and verse 6. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. Uh -huh. And they bit the people. And much people of Israel died. And much people of who? Israel died. So while died. they were in the wilderness, right, they were complaining, they were murmuring about Moses. So God sent serpents to the children of Israel to bite and kill them to teach them a lesson. But he didn't want to get and forsake them. He tried to teach them a lesson. Let's see what he did to heal them. So if you got bit by a poisonous snake and you're laying there in pain and agony, you need some form of healing. All right, let's see what kind of healing it was. Read. Verse 7. Come on. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, uh -huh. for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpent from us. Read. And Moses prayed for the people. Go to verse 8. And the Lord said unto Moses, uh -huh. Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. Read. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten. He says it's everyone. So he says it's everyone that was bitten. Who was all bitten? Was the whole world bitten? Bring it out. Or just Israel was bitten? It's who was there with people. Okay, so Israel who was there. Yeah, it's who was there with people. Right, because in yeah. 1 John 3 and 14 says, the same as though in the wilderness. Yeah. So if everyone was not in the wilderness, let's finish this out though. Then we'll get, get back to John 3 16. Read. But I got to go. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. Shall live. So the same way Moses lifted the serpent and healed the Israelites, the same way the Son of Man will be lifted up in today's time and, and, and save the Israelites. Luke 1 and 68. Because the thing about the Christian church is they, will be, they don't read it in context. Because if you read verse 1, it's Jesus coming to Nicodemus. So that's one Jew man coming and speaking to another Jew about their, their people, the state of their people. They're not worried about the so-called white man. They're not worried about the so-called Chinese man. They're not worried about the so-called East Indian man. They're talking about Israelite affairs. That's why they're talking about the world. John 18 20. John 18 and 20. I got it. Read that. John chapter 18 and verse 20. So let's see what this world is, who Christ is speaking about in John 3, 16. Read. Jesus answered, it, uh, answered him, I spake openly to the world. So Jesus Christ said, he spoke openly to the world. Let's see who that world is. Read. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple. Hold on. Hold on, let them pass by right quick. When I hold distract you, try to distract you. This world was for you, sister. That's how you're able to park it, and it made sense to you real quick. Because who was in the wilderness? Israel, the same way Moses had a little of that serpent for Israel, the same way two verses later, who he's coming to save. Right. All right, but let's get more inside of John, who that world is. Because this most important definition of the world inside of us. And depending on how you understand it, that's when you will know what it's talking about. Everybody can read it right quick. Read that. John chapter 18 and verse 20. Come on, get up. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whither the Jews always resort. Whether the who? The Jews always resort. Isaiah 45 and verse 17. So he says, I spake openly to the world in the synagogue and with the Jews resort. So is everyone in those synagogues? Or just his people? We're going to get another scripture. This is what you're not going to hear in the Christian church. Because once they start teaching the truth, that means their money's going to stop. Right. Because all those other nations in there who are not of Israel, they're going to be like, wait, wait, wait. Jesus Christ is only coming for Israel. What does that mean for us? Right. Then they'll, why would they even need to believe in God anymore? Because it's not for them. God was never for the other nations. Let's read that. Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 17. Come on. But Israel shall be saved. So Israel shall be saved. Read. In the Lord, with an everlasting salvation, Lord, ye shall not be ashamed, nor confound. He just said, you should not be ashamed of who this Bible is written to. This Bible is written to you, sister. Right. It's written to everyone on this sign. 
We are a chosen race of people. And God said, don't be ashamed about that thing. We have to believe what the words say, not what man tells us, not what the school system tells us, not what religion tells us. We gotta believe, thus saith the Lord, but as it is written, That's read. It. Nor confounded world without end. What did he just refer Israel as? A world. They are their own world, like the sports world. When they're talking about sports, they're not worried about the politician, the politic world. They're not worried about the sea world. They're worried about their own sports world. Same as, same as this. This world of Israel, the Bible's written to Israel only. Amos 3 and 1. But there's a blessing and a cursing that comes with God's words, right? So, being God's chosen race of people, it's important. But it holds weight, all right? Because he gave us two conditions of living, all right? And let's read a little bit about those conditions, all right? Read Amos 3 and verse 1. Amos, chapter 3 and verse 1. Come on, go. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you. God is speaking to the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. He says, listen to the words that he's about to read to you. Read. O children of Israel, against the whole family, which I brought up from the land of Egypt. What did he say? Saying, you only. He said what? You only. He says, you only. Read. Have I known of all the families of the earth? He said, I only know Israel out of everybody upon the earth. That's right. He does not know the white man. Right. He does not know the so-called Chinese man. Right. He does not know these other nationalities. Right. He only deals and deals, speaks with Israel. Right. Read. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquity. He says, I will punish you, Israel, for your iniquity. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. Why is that important? Do you know what iniquity is? Hold that. Psalms 38 and verse 18. I'm going to read you exactly what uh, iniquity is. And think of what you're going to learn about here compared to all these other religions. Our answers come from the Bible. There is no, oh, I think it means this. Oh, pray about it. No, no, this ain't the Christian church. We're coming to you out of the scripture to give you the healing that you need, that we need as a nation of people. Because we're lawless. Our people are lawless. You see our young boys, 13, 14, 15, carrying big banana clip AK, walking through the hood, shooting up. It's not the, the 30 year olds you doing killing, it's the young boys. Right. They have no guidance. The black, it's one out of three black men are going to be in a penitentiary. Where are the fathers? That for, the father is that main structure of the home. That's why we have a lot of single moms in these households. Men, they're, they're getting these tendencies from their mother. That's why they're so emotional. They can't really deal with people because there's no structure. We need this structure in our community, but we refuse to come back to God's law. That's why we're going to remain on the bottom of society. Right. Read. Psalms chapter 38 and verse 18. Come on. Where I will declare my iniquity. So we're about to read to you exactly what iniquity means. Read. I will be sorry for my sin. You'll be sorry for what? My sin. So sin and iniquity are the same thing. Right. And do you know what sin is, sister? Let me read that. Let me get your exact definition. No. So without a shadow of a doubt, you will know. I know what iniquity is. I know what sin is. Read. First John. Chapter 3 and verse 4. Come on. Out. Whosoever committeth sin. So whosoever is going to commit a sin, read. Transgresses also the law. Read. For sin is the transgression of the law. Transgression means to break. So if you have laws of God and you break those laws, you are in the midst of sin. That's right. It's that simple. Deuteronomy 28, because I was bringing up earlier. Two conditions for God's chosen race of people. All right? Let's hear You want the good news first or the bad news first? Bad first, verse 15. Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. Come on. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So same as earlier, they're in the wilderness in this instance. Right, right, right after they got bit up and stuff like that, they're in the wilderness, all right? Moses is giving them the law a second time. He gave it to them first in Exodus 24, and now he's giving it to them right now in Deuteronomy. So he's saying, all right, if y'all don't listen to the voice of the Lord thy God, God was speaking through Moses, all right? So he said, if y'all don't listen to the words I'm telling you, read. To observe, to do all his commandments. They had to do what? All his commandments. You know what Israel had to do? All his commandments. That's what about the ones that make them feel good? They had to do those, right? Even the ones that make them feel bad. You still got to do those. It does not matter how you feel. God says, do my commandments. Or else what? Read. And his statue, which I command thee this day. What was going to happen to us? That all these curses shall come upon thee. 
and overtake thee. God said to the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, if you do not do all of my commandments, I'm going to send curses your way. Right. And that's what he promised me. He says, but it shall come to pass. God is not going to go back on his word. So if we break these commandments, what was going to happen to us? Curses. Curses. And we were just talking about one. Verse 16. About our, our city, our neighborhoods, our communities. Read that. Verse 16. Come on. Curse shalt thou be in the city. God says everywhere you're going to live, every city, you're going to be cursed. So if you look at where the most crime is, the most people leading in diseases, the most drug usage, who lives predominantly in those areas? Yeah. Blacks. Also Hispanics. But God says, curse shall thou be in the city. That is a curse. Isaiah 65, 15. Let's read another curse. This is how you know. If you, if you look at this world today, this world is not keeping the commandments of God. This world, like you see, there's a voting season. God never established voting. He sent the king over Israel. So this world is given to the hands of the so-called white man. This world is given to him for this moment to teach us a lesson. But in this right now, we're about to read how you can see this world is not keeping God's commandments. So who's going to be cursed? If this whole entire world is not keeping commandments, you're going to see on the bottom who are the Israelites. And that's how you know without a shadow of a doubt, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we are the Israelites. And here's the most curse. Read. Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 15. And ye shall leave your name for a curse. He says you shall leave your name for a curse. Who do our last names come from? From the white man. If your last name is Smith, Johnson, Black, White, any of these heathen last names, you have lost your name for a curse because you decided not to keep God's commandments. Right. Read that again. And ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen. Unto his chosen. So what is your last name? Second Chronicles chapter 9 and verse 9. Oh. Is that it? That's what I was looking for, 9 and 9? No, it's not Second Chronicles 9 and 9. Let's see what, your, what our names actually are. Second Chronicles, chapter 7 and verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name. God says we got to be called by his name. Read. So humble themselves. What do we have to do? Humble themselves. So first step is to humble yourself. Understand, oh, I have not been living the ways of God. I must humble myself get out of the ways of Babylon and come learn how to properly serve God. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission, minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. I, you, I 